You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hello, Morphology. Hello, Parrot Talk. (laughs) How's it going over there? It is going well. It's, you know, this is Iowa. So one day it's snowing, the next day it's raining. Today the sun Mm -hmm. is shining. As soon as we're done recording, I'm going to jump on my bike. Uh, How about you? Yes, absolutely. Just the same. And just for a note for anyone who doesn't live in Iowa, it literally did snow and rain and sunshine within the last five days, four days. Yes, yes. So... Yeah, and then yesterday, all the dandelions appeared in my yard, so it is just that time of year. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. And I'm about to go biking as well, so let's get this podcast recorded. All right. (laughs) Well, we have been hinting at it for quite a few weeks that, you know, we opened up the Ragbri Newbies hotline, and of course, um, the good folks like you, AP, at Ragbri are getting all kinds of emails from first-time Ragbri riders, you know, people coming back for the 50th, lots Mm -hmm. and lots of questions. So we thought we are going to get in on an episode of Frequently Asked Questions. That's right. So uh, we're going to try to cover a wide variety of questions on this episode. But if you have other questions, we would love to hear them. We'll certainly do another Frequently Asked Questions episode in the future or use your question as a Ragby 101 snippet. So yes, uh, keep those questions coming to just go bike podcast at gmail.com. Yes. And so far the people that have called in to Ragby 101 hotline have mm-hmm. been awesome. I absolutely love listening. It's fun to hear people's voices because then, yeah. you know, it's different than an email because you can kind of sense, you know, either urgency or, uh, you know, what they're nervous about or what their question is. So it's been really fun. So thanks, everybody who has called so far. And of course, remember, the Ragbri 101 hotline number is 515-303-0385. And we've said this before, you don't actually have to talk to a person, you just leave a voicemail. So, okay, should we get right into it, Andrea? All right, so I'm going to ask the first question, and it is from Debbie, and Debbie called us on the hotline, so thank you, Debbie. We really appreciate that. Uh, She would like to wear sandals, but without the clips in them. Is that okay, or is it safer to clip in? Um, I didn't really write this down in our notes, but she was more saying, is it okay to wear sandals without clipping in as far as, you know, is it okay with ragbri? And that one is an easy question to answer, right, Andrea? Like, do you, do you require yes, any sort of shoe for Ragbri? Absolutely not. And in fact, we, as a partnership with Shimano, are selling Ragbri themed bike sandals. Mm. So you can find those on our website, ragbri.com. And they're really cool. And you know what? Pretty much any cycling sandal that you can find out there on the market has comes with a little plastic plug in the bottom of it so that you don't have to use the cleat attachment. You certainly can, and they certainly work really well with the cleat attachment, but you're no, by no means required to clip in, and Rag Ray doesn't dictate what kind of shoes you can wear or really any other kind of clothing, <laughs> Right. Be honest. Yeah. I mean, look at yeah. the photographs from years past. You will know that pretty much anything goes on Rag Bry. Yeah. Um, and one thing I'll add to that, you know, if you have the platform pedals, meaning the pedals that are a little bit bigger, they don't have the option to clip into, you can get away with any shoe, whether it's like a tennis shoe, a sneaker, flip-flops, you know, it's it's more about your own comfort level um, because you're going to be on your bike a long time each day. Yeah. I think just as a pers- personal advice, I would say don't wear flip-flops or open-toed shoes where they're like the toe is actually poking off the end of your shoe mm-hmm. unless it's specifically designed for cycling uh, because uh, it's it would be really dangerous if your shoes fly off while you're cycling. Yeah. Um, the Shimano sandals have a nice molded front piece so that it kind of curves up to cradle your toe yep. and they're strapped on that yep. this is the one time where it's cool to wear velcro yes and so, those sandals yeah. are so awesome if you haven't seen them make sure you go on the rag Rye website and look at them um the other yeah. thing i wanted to bring up really quick and maybe debbie's thinking about this too is if you're not well versed on how to clip in and out of your pedals mm-hmm. um you know 
RAGBRAI 50 might not be the place to learn. Make sure that yeah. you're learning at home and you're comfortable. You know, like I, if I'm in a big crowd, I will unclip both feet. Don't make fun of me. I do both <laughs> feet and I do uh -huh. both feet because if I do one foot and then I lean the, the wrong way, I'm going yeah. down. So I unclip both feet well before I have to stop so that I'm not locked into my bike. So there yeah. are definitely safety issues if you're not comfortable clipping in. But that's that's more, you know, you as the rider have to determine rather than, um, you know, ragbri as a whole. Yeah, it's definitely personal preference. I mean, it's definitely practice and getting comfortable clipping in and out. I'd say if you haven't worn those before, then I would still encourage you to try them if you're interested. Um, I feel like if you are dedicated and you practice, you will get comfortable. There's plenty of time to get comfortable using yes. them before Magpie. Yes. But there's no need and you don't need to stress yourself out about having them or not. Uh, there's going to be every type of pedal and foot and shoe imaginable on Ragbri. So there's no peer pressure involved in this whatsoever. It's just whatever you are comfortable with and what you like your style of riding. Agreed. And if this year happens to be cold, let's just say I'm making it mm -hmm. up. Let's just say it's okay. going to be 45 degrees every day. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> but um, when I went to the Taylor Swift concert, I bought these shoes that um, the bottoms of them light up. Mm -hmm. And so as you pedal, you know, they can flash or be solid and they're about every <laughs> color. So if it's cold this year, you may see me wearing those shoes on Ragbri. Oh, I know, but <laughs> would love to. I don't know that I want to wish it to be 45 degrees. So that may be that may be a bad story. Well, you may have jinxed us, but that's OK. <laughs> uh, you got to be prepared for anything. I'm right, Bryce, so, yes. OK, let's yeah. go to yeah. I'll All do right. the next question. OK. Um, and uh, this one, I'm sure, is on a lot of people's minds. This is from Dave. He called in. He says, I'm registered. I'm coming from California and I'm coming in on the Amtrak. I think he called it the California Zephyr, or maybe I, I read that. I think that's what it is. Okay. No, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So he's coming in on the California Zephyr on Amtrak into Omaha. And then he says, I'm looking for ideas on how the heck I get from Omaha to the start of Ragbri. Yeah. And that is a common question. And it's a tough question because this year with Ragbri 50, a lot of our transport shuttles filled up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our charters are filled up. So it's a little bit more difficult this year than it has been in the past, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. I know that several of the charters have added buses and have expanded their capacity since selling out. So I would try contacting both Pork Bellies or Bransel Charters because they're both really solid, really dependable charters. And you would not be able to ride with them as through the ride. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, they wouldn't be carrying your luggage and they wouldn't. those services have not reopened up but their transportation from possibly um, Davenport and possibly Omaha have opened up. You'll have to ask around mm -hmm. um, because they are filling up pretty quickly and I would do it as soon as possible. Yep. Um, the other option that I would recommend is that you go online and try to make some friends and see if you can connect with anyone else, mm -hmm. uh, other riders, because there are people who are carpooling. There are teams that we wouldn't consider charters that, might be willing to give you a ride. Um, the probably the most popular places to do that on Facebook would be uh, there's a page called Rag Ride Newbies that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. And there's a page called, it's our unofficial fan page and it's called Rag Ride L and then it's followed by the dates of Rag Bri. And that page has a lot of people who are making plans for Rag Bri. Um, just a heads up though, it does take a few days for Post to get approved on that. We have no uh, jurisdiction over that page. But whoever is monitoring that page, they do have to approve every post. And sometimes it takes a while. So get that post there sooner than later if you plan on posting there. Right. Um, and then the third place that I would recommend is the RAGBRAI forum. And that is ragbri.com slash forums. And it's a little tricky to use because it is kind of an older technology. So I have posted a couple of the top two posts should be me talking about how to log in and post to a forum. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, one reference back to when you first started talking about, you know, like check in with the charters to see if they are doing transportation, but they won't be able to like, you know, put your tent up and support you as far as luggage mm -hmm. goes. But I'm sure everybody remembers or knows, or we'll just say it again, that with your RAGBRAI registration, 
your gear is transported every day via a big old yep. semi truck. So yes. all you have to do is get yourself to the start of Ragbri. And I guess the moral of that story is it is the writer's responsibility to get to the start of Ragbri. You know, yes. we can offer you suggestions, but it's still up to you, you know, whether you, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't think you can ride your bike from Omaha to the start, but yeah. um, hopefully Andrea's uh, ideas would give you a few suggestions, Dave. Yeah. So hopefully okay. that gets him started. Sorry. I wish I had a better answer to that, but yeah. this year is just a little, kind of a different beast with the number of writers that are going to be attending. So yeah. Uh, yep, you got to kind of make your plans early and maybe often, <laughs> depending yeah. on if things change. So, and yep. I am pretty jealous because, you know, coming across the country on the Amtrak would be pretty darn cool. Oh, yeah, I know. And I have ridden that Amtrak, but only to the middle of nowhere in Nebraska. So I would love oh. to see what it looks like in, in Colorado and California through the mountains. I'm sure it's gorgeous. So yeah. I hope your train trips brings you through the daytime through that beautiful country. Exactly. And yeah. that you bring your camera. Yeah. So. Okay, so I'm going to go with the next question, and this is one of our most common questions that we get, and it is, when are my registration jerseys and shorts and bibs and all the merch I ordered with registration going to arrive? Mm -hmm. And that is a tough question because we have a lot of merchandise orders, and there's only five of us on the Rag Buy staff right now. So we are working our buttons off to get things packaged and ready to go for you. Um, we also had the Dream Team come in recently, so shout out to the Dream Team for helping us get jersey orders packaged. And that was a long answer. The short answer is we're shipping all the team jerseys ahead of time. So if you're on a team, we will be shipping your jerseys to you um, in the next couple of weeks. But if you're an individual that ordered your merchandise with registration, we will be shipping your merchandise with your registration packet oh, okay. in June and July as we normally have done in the past. Okay. And now don't panic. I said July but we finish all registration shipping by July 4th. So it should have plenty of time to get to you. Okay. And, yeah. you know, at the time of this recording, we're still in April. So yes. I would hate for people to get their jersey and wear it out before the big <laughs> ride. So, yeah. Yeah. These and, jerseys ain't wearing out. Oh, you're right. But... I know. They're primal. They're primal jerseys. They're amazing. <laughs> and I did yeah. see a really cool uh, photo on social media this past weekend um, with the Ragbri vehicle full to the brim of orders that were shipping out. So you're making yes. progress. Yeah. Those jerseys that the Dream Team help us package, they we put them literally in the bed of the Ragbri truck and just drove them off to the post office and... I believe it filled eight of the UPS or USPS carts that they have. Wow. Like their big shipping carts. So it was a lot. We have been working really hard um, with the help of some friends to get these jerseys out and we're doing all we can. So the uh, second short answer to that question is we're getting them out as fast as we can. So you should see yours sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But again, like you said, it is early. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next okay. question. When will the gravel and century loop announcements happen? I think that Ooh. we we did when we interviewed Matt Fippen, the executive director, he did say that that was, you know, something that was happen, happening secondary to creating the route. And he was kind of alluding to maybe there would be more than one gravel opportunity. But have you heard anything more? Yes. So the gravel and century route should be announced on April 21st, which may be the day that this podcast is dropped Whoa. or the day after yeah so take a if you haven't seen the routes yet take a look at the rag by social media and check it out see if they have the routes on them cool so it's it's right around the corner okay it's well, not already here yeah all right that's an easy one all right yeah so okay so next question um uh, let's see which question should we i'll just do a quick one um when will the rag by wristband numbers be assigned mm. Uh, registration online registration closes a little bit early this year. It closes on May 15th for week long and day passes. And we are going to assign all wristband numbers on June 1st, as we have in the past. So we're going to stick with that June 1st uh, wristband assignment date. And I know some charters will need you to fill out that information so that they have your wristband number and they confirm that you're riding with RAGBRAI. You can find that on inmotive.com, which is where you registered. So, then with that, I'd like to add that while we're closing online registration early, you will this year for the first time ever be able to register for a week-long wristband during the ride or hmm. at the Rag Bright Expo in Sioux City oh, cool. on the Saturday before the ride. So we have plenty of opportunities to register. 
but we just need a little bit extra time to get everything organized and shipped out this year. Right. So that's why it's, yeah. So uh, just so I am hearing you right, if I am registered for a week-long charter, like let's say pork bellies, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. they are going to require me to give them my RAGBRAI wristband number when it's available, correct? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So they know. They just want to. And they know just like the rest of us know that they we won't get those numbers until June 1st. Yep, exactly. So okay. anyone who's an official rag by charter should know that already. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay. So they're not going to boot me out on, you know, May 1st because yeah. they know <laughs> that I don't know the number yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's it's kind of, you know, it's kind of confusing, but it's the way it has to be because obviously people want to make plans and they want to sign up with the charter Yeah. and the charters want to know how many people are going to be riding with them so they can request appropriate campground sizes. So okay. I think that's, you know, that's just kind of the way it has to be. Okay, cool. So. All right. Am I up next? You're up next. Okay. Maxim called in and he says he needs some help. He okay. has no interest in camping. Okay. And he's been searching, but he can't find hotels in every overnight. So he's asking, are there alternative accommodations or will people in the overnight towns put the riders up? So I I know I have a answer, but I want to hear your answer, Andrea. Well, this is a question that we get asked a lot because people are used to the softer side of life, the more comfortable side of life. Uh, as it- As I am. I mean, as I am as well. But yeah. the unfortunate answer is that RAGBRAI is a camping event right. predominantly. Right. So the majority of our riders will be camping. And as Maxim has found out, the hotel rooms go fast. I sure wish we had extra hotel rooms for our RAGBRAI staff. Mm-hmm. So they are in short supply um, if you're able to find them at all at this point in time. So I wouldn't count on that. The other thing I would suggest is... You know, a lot of people will bring an RV and have a driver and, um, you know, just bring some friends along on the ride. And the RV is a nice compromise between camping and having a hotel room because you still get to be inside. And for those of you who don't want to camp because you have something like a CPAP machine that needs to be plugged in, you'll have that electricity as well. Right. And I was going to add to that, um, you know, we don't know why Maxim has no interest in camping you know it could be he just likes the finer things in life or maybe his you know health requires him he Mm -hmm. doesn't want to lay on the ground it could be as simple as you know finding uh, some sort of cot online that folds up real small and can fit into your luggage that the rag bride truck um, takes from town to town so then you wouldn't be Mm -hmm. sleeping on the ground but um, uh, now let's let's address the question of will people in the towns put riders up, and yeah. I think that's um, that's also kind of a risky option. Well, you're not guaranteed anything with that, but each of the overnight towns will set up homestay programs so that you could potentially be matched with someone who lives in the town, um, either to stay in their home or to camp in their yard and then use their amenities, possibly mm-hmm. like their shower and their AC, just to cool off for a little bit. Or sometimes there's a homestay where they just allow you to camp in their yard and it's quieter right? instead of being in the main campground where there's just a lot of other people and there's natural background noise from all that. So there are a wide variety of options with the homestays. And again, they're not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And I know only one of the towns so far has opened up their homestays and that is not out of the normal. Usually it is May or June before these homestays are opened up. Mm -hmm. So you just hold on a little bit longer if you're interested in that, and we'll be posting that information. Um, I usually do sort of a roundup on our Facebook page and do a big post about that so people can see. Mm-hmm. Or um, we haven't really talked about on the RAGBRAI website, there is a website devoted to the overnight towns of RAGBRAI 50. Mm-hmm. And you can find that if you go to RAGBRAI.com and then on the menu bar, there's an option called The Ride. And if you click on that, then one of the options below is RAGBRAI L Overnight Towns. Okay. So that page has not been populated very much yet because it is extremely early in the planning process. Mm-hmm. They're just People just don't have their information set or ready for the public yet. Like I've been saying, there's just a lot of riders this year and there's a lot of details to iron out. And the towns are really aware of trying to be... Um, to not put out information and then have to change it. Sure, or to, sure. you know make sure that they have everything ready to go for the riders to make it easier. And it's also 
early, like I said. So, Mm -hmm. you know, just hang, hold on to your horses for another couple weeks, maybe even another month. And that information will be on the website, but we have the, um, the info, like the structure in place Mm -hmm. and we'll be filling it in pretty darn soon. But yes, that's where you'll be able to find the housing. And I want to, can I add something to that? Mm -hmm. To make sure that, you know, we're answering the question of will people in the overnight towns put riders up? And truly, that answer is going to be dependent on that town, right? So Mm -hmm. if, let's say we're going to the town of, I'm going to make a town up, Smithville, and (laughs) everyone in Smithville is a volunteer and they're all at the beer tents and they're all making pies, they might not want Ragbri riders or have the time for ragbri riders to stay in their home so they Mm -hmm. make the choice so you know if nobody is available to be at home to support riders then there will just be no homestays in that town um of course all the towns we're going to there probably will be some but it's it's up to the individuals just like you know if people are coming through your town and you decide to open up your house to strangers um you know you may or you may say yes or you may say no well, yeah. I mean, and it depends on the size of the town. Like you said, there's in towns like, say, Des Moines, there's just simply more houses and more people that might be willing to put you up. So it yeah. just depends. As a kid, I did a lot of homestays with my mom when we were riding Rag Brian. We had some really wonderful experiences where um, someone took us on a boat ride or oh, wow. um, one of the hosts or several of the hosts made us breakfast or different snacks or had us brought us Gatorade. There's one really cute kid that had biker juice for us, which was Gatorade. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, you know, that was, those people were really, really awesome and accommodating. And I still remember them to this day. But we also had homestays where we had arranged it beforehand. We show up to the house and the house was locked and we could never get in. And we ended up having to camp. So, you know, it is, it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of just the way it is. Part of Ragbri is being flexible and um, enjoying the adventure of it. And, you know, just kind of taking things as they come and, you know, really enjoying the fun parts and also enjoying the parts that kind of stink because that's part of the fun. So, well, that makes the good stories for years in the, in the future. Exactly. Yeah. So, (laughs) but the the more, the moral of this story of this topic is that Ragbrite is designed to be a camping event. Yeah. So there's all sorts of ways to make it more and less comfortable for yourself. <laughs> but <laughs> I would advise you, if you are asking this question, you're probably a new Ragbri rider. And I just really can't uh, promote that Ragbri Newbies Facebook page enough. Yeah. They have such good advice on that page. Yep. So. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm up next. Um, I'm going to ask this question. What kind of luggage can I bring on Ragbri? Oh, yes. Can I bring a, a hard case suitcase with roller things on the bottom so I can <laughs> get from my tent to my um, the truck? Uh, I'm laughing because absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think we... Oh, go ahead. No, you, well, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I, um, I don't use the luggage service that reg, you know, that comes with my registration because usually I have all my stuff on my bike, including mm-hmm. my tent and my clothing and everything. But I have hung out at the semi where all the luggage is and mm-hmm. holy moly, that is, that's an entire event in itself. And those kids yeah. that are hauling those bags out every single day, like it is I don't know. It's an amazing operation. And it also yeah. makes more sense when there are restrictions put on bag size and weight and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. 50 pounds is the weight limit. So part of it is a heavy solid case would uh, put you way over that limit way faster, but a hard case is more likely to break or be damaged in shipping. I mean, in transportation, we're pretty careful, but it's just a lot of stuff all moving together in a semi mm-hmm. and it stuff happens and heaven forbid any one of our baggage technicians got hurt based on somebody's luggage or like gouged or scratched. Yeah. I mean, and we don't want that for the riders either because we've had people say, Oh, well, I don't care if my luggage gets damaged. I'll just tape it up. Well, okay. But that, that stops being okay when someone gets hurt or if your stuff spills out all over the semi. Right. Um, so for that reason, we don't allow, uh, hard cases and we also don't allow backpacks with hard frames and we also don't allow anything with wheels on it because 
uh, those wheels will snap right off. And sure. to be honest, you're moving that suitcase from probably a gravel surface to a grassy surface. You're not going to be rolling that bad boy too much anyway. So <laughs> to right. be honest with you. You're so, right. Well, and if uh, you if you peek inside of the luggage trailer, you know, maybe when it's full, you'll also understand why you need a soft-sided bag because they all need to fit in that trailer. So yeah, that yeah. that in itself is a, a quite a photo. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> those kits are really good at Tetris now. After if they weren't before back by, they are now. Yeah. <laughs> so, they do such a good job moving the baggage, and we want to make it as easy as possible for them. And side note, we do weigh bags, so okay, uh, you won't you'll be getting away with your fifty one pound bag. Okay, so so, yep. um, so the specific question you asked was, what kind of luggage can I bring? So should mm-hmm. we like overview real quick? Yeah, so I would recommend my favorite is an army surplus duffel bag. And I will personalize my bag with a brightly colored duct tape. That's one that I like. What kind do you like? Uh, I used to have a surplus or army surplus bag that had colorful duct tape on it. Um, Mm -hmm. I have since upgraded to a, um, it's a duffel bag that is waterproof. So Mm. it literally, it's like almost feels plasticky on the outside. And, uh, but same general shape as what you're referring to. Yeah. And just I'm going to replug this. I know we've talked about it before, but there is an excellent packing video on YouTube. If you look up how to pack for Vagbri and you'll know you have the right video because Murph is featured on the thumbnail. It's me. And uh, it also features the bag that I still use that is still in excellent shape. And yeah. um, I've mentioned before the actual brand name and the size. but So you can maybe find it in the notes of that video or just mm-hmm. send us a message where I can shoot it out again. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great bag. And the other thing I like about that style of bag is that it has the two carry handles, and you can kind of use it like a backpack, yeah. which does make it easier to transport. So, yep. and if you let's say you go back to Andrea's option, you know, which is like the army surplus bag, um, and you know the bag sitting outside all day, and then it's pouring down rain. How do you deal with that? I put all my stuff in plastic. Yes, me too. Yeah, everything. But that was before I knew about those uh, rainproof duffel bags. If I was to ride back by again, I'd probably get one of those. Mm -hmm. Or just use a trash bag inside the duffel bag. That works just fine. Yep. I do the same thing. Yeah. All right. Well, Murph, you want to hit us with our last question of the day? Okay. I would almost say that this is probably the number one question that you guys have been getting. Um, Mm. Can you please send us long-term parking details for both Sioux City and Davenport? People need to know where to leave their vehicles. Yes. Okay. So first of all, absolutely, there is long-term parking in both Sioux City and Davenport. Those are totally going to be options for you. Mm -hmm. As of right now, only Sioux City has opened up their long-term parking. So you can go to the um, Sioux City Facebook page and you can look up the parking information there off of their website. I'm going to look it up right now. And then I assume soon the website will also be up and live and people can go there to access. Yes, on ragbri.com. But Sioux City Ragbri has their own separate webpage called ragbrisiouxcity.com. Okay. And that's where you can go to learn about their long-term parking right this very minute. Davenport Ragbri is still working on finalizing all their details for long-term parking. You should expect to see their information come out in a couple weeks, Mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're recording this in mid-April, if you're wondering what that timeline means. But they have a Facebook page for Ragbri Davenport, and they also have a website of their own called DavenportRagbri.com. All of that information will also be available on their website on the Ragbri homepage. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can find their information. It's just not quite ready yet. So just hold your horses, like I said, and you'll be able to park in either Sioux City or Davenport, whichever floats your boat. Okay, and I assume, based on the population of both Sioux City and Davenport, that they are going to find space to accommodate an awful lot of vehicles. Don't you assume? Yes, I would say they're not going to sell out on long-term parking. They know how many people are coming on the ride, and we keep them appraised of that on a weekly basis. So they're ready for you. They're going to be all set. I think they just need to finalize a couple last things, and they're going to be you can let a rip on okay. registering for your parking space. So, you know, it's stinks to not have everything finalized for your vacation yet but just know it's going to be there for you so Mm -hmm. uh just got to bide your time a little bit 
Excellent. And then, you know, as we previously mentioned, when someone was asking about how to get from one place to another, um, it is not part of your registration to be shuttled to the start or the end or at the end back to the start of RAGBRAI. So that's something that um, you'll want to check out either a charter or have a plan with a team bus or with your friends or be mm-hmm. like me and just ride your bike home. <laughs> yeah, you can do it that way too. <laughs> and I forgot to say, all of this long-term parking stuff is organized by the communities themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's why the timelines are just slightly different. Um, a lot of this stuff that's planned for our visit to these communities is done by volunteers or by people who work for the city but are doing it outside of their normal responsibilities, oh, above yeah. and beyond their 40 do- hours a week job. I mean, this is some real passion and time devoted to planning for us. And I just encourage you all to be patient as you can be as they try to get everything ready for us because it really is um, an act of love to host a rag bride because it's a lot of work and yeah. you have to really want us to come visit, you know, so, and they do, and they are really excited and um, they're just, it's all coming together. So if I'm hearing you right, you're saying that we all need to just be a little bit patient and maybe we should use our nervous energy to get on our bikes and get some training miles in. That's right. And just go bike. <laughs> and just go bike. You're right. Yeah. Well, yep. maybe so. we, let's um, let's call it done for this week. Um, I know we like we have a ton of questions that we have not answered yet. And hopefully people can continue to feel comfortable sending messages um, because either the RAGBRAI team will answer you immediately or we'll have it on a future podcast. Yeah, exactly. So you're welcome to get a hold of us on all of the RAGBRAI social channels. We're at RAGBRAI on Facebook and Instagram. And on Twitter, we're at RAGBRAI underscore Iowa. Or if you'd like to ask a question specifically for the podcast, you can always get a hold of us at Just Go Bike Podcast at gmail.com or at Just Go Bike on any of your social platforms. Yes. And a side note, I'll speak on behalf of Andrea. If you're asking a question to RAGBRAI on the RAGBRAI Newbies Facebook page or the fan page, keep in mind that RAGBRAI does not, those are not official RAGBRAI pages on Facebook. So there's no guarantee that the staff at RAGBRAI is going to see those messages in a timely manner or maybe even at all. Right. And I would take the answers as advice, not um, the letter of the law. If you want a exact question or answer, you better, well, the question's up to you, but if you want an exact answer, you better (laughs) get a hold of us on one of our official channels. But there, those websites are a great, great place for just advice or like chitter chatter about RAGBRAI. Um, So I wouldn't discount them. Just don't, like I said, just don't take them as the letter of the law. All right. Thanks, Andrea, for helping out with some of those rider questions. And we've got plenty more in the pipeline, right? Yep, that's right. I'm happy to answer questions anytime through the podcast, through the social channels, whatever you have with less than 100 days to RAGBRAI. It makes me so excited to think about RAGBRAI, talk about RAGBRAI. You ask whatever you want, I'll answer it. But in the meantime, between then and now, I'm going to go bike. Yes, me too. All right, thanks. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at just go bike podcast at gmail.com or you can also follow us on social media at just go bike on facebook twitter and instagram please rate review and subscribe to this podcast especially if you're a fan and if you have any extra time pop on over to the morphology podcast for more bike adventure interviews all right that's a wrap we'll be back next week until then just, just go bike, bike.